Ladies and gentlemen, it's midday. It is Saturday, 25th of March, 2023. And it's Swindon Town versus Stockport County. Now, the acoustics are rather different today. There's a reason why our acoustics are different. The eagle-eyed listeners, regular listeners to the show, will know that we have switched our location from the hustle and bustle of the Legends Lounge to the salubrious surrounds of the bouncy seats in the Arkles. We are pitch side. Yes, that's right, ladies and gents. We're pitch side at your county ground. Yes, your county ground, my county ground, our county ground. And I'm joined today by a whole bunch of people, but we've got a really busy day. So at the moment, I've got just myself and Adam. How are we, Adam? Yeah, not too bad, Hannes. How are you doing? Yeah, really good. So it's all change up today, isn't it? It's all change up because we've got, we've, we're spread thin, the Sir Tom Broadbent House Day, Adam, aren't we? We're spread thin. The reason why we're missing two of our cohort is they're with a certain Michael Doughty. And Michael is just leading a merry band of runners away from the um, uh, club shop. Um, on a, uh, what, 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 what it was described, a, a fun run, a fun run. fun run. Challenging, but, you know, at the same time, uh, um, inclusive run. nothing run. fun about running. Nothing <laughs> fun about running. Yeah, they can't dress it up, can they? But, so the boys have gone over there, and they're, they're speaking to Michael, speaking to Rob. And I'm really excited because Michael is going to be joining us on the pitch later. But little does Michael know, we're going to be surprising him with the 2018, tro- uh, sorry, 2019-2020, I keep calling it 2018 trophy. It's like I've lost two years of my life with COVID, but we've got the 2019-2020 trophy in our hands, Adam. Feel that trophy, how does that feel? That is good. Uh, with the ribbons still, still present and correct. So Michael doesn't know, but Michael is going to be presented with the 2019-20 trophy on the pitch by yours truly. Um, it's going to be led out the players' tunnel. Michael's going to do a pre-match interview. I'm out on the pitch today, your pre-match um, rabble rouser. But um, I've got a few people to meet. Anyway, Michael's going to be out on the pitch with us later. He's going to be presented with his trophy. But I'm also thrilled to confirm, joining me on the trophy, talking all things 1969, will be none other than two-goal Wembley hero, Don Rogers and John Trollope, MBE, who still holds the record for the most number of appearances for a English football club. Amazing. Two legends, obviously. We're sitting here, we're staring across the way there at the Don Rogers stand, and we're sat in the stand named after John Trollope. It's a momentous case. There's so much poetry, Adam, tied up in today, isn't there? We're in a ground that we have just taken co-ownership of with the owner. We're going to be meeting guys that the two bloody stands are named after. We've got Still got a shout at the playoffs, as balmy as it is, as balmy as it is, and as long a shot as it is, we're still in with a uh, with a shot. Anyway, so today's show, Adam, is going to all be about the case for and the case against, whether or not Swindon have still got an opportunity to get into the playoffs. T- typical of, of my good self, I'm feeling a little glass half full, you're feeling a little glass half empty. We've got a couple of the guys that are coming back, and I've seen them like walking around the pitches at the guys on their way back, I think so. They're sort of, they're still to be, they're still to be convinced. And we've got a growing band of listeners that are tuning in as well, and they're a little bit like, oh, you know, I don't know. If the, the, the Sir Tom Broadbent Lounge poll that we ran on Wednesday night is anything to go by, 79% of our fan base if we're to take the 480 odd people that contributed to that poll as a sample size, that's a reliable sample size. It would seem that the fans don't think we can do it. What do you think, Adam? Um, yeah, like you say, I'm very much glass half empty at the minute because I'll, I'll be a lot more confident um, on us making it to those playoffs. If, for example, we were scraping the odd point here and there against the teams that are better than us this season. And we need to also be confidently beating these teams that are below us. I think if you can beat the bottom half of the league and have an OK 50-50 sort of decent form against the top half, especially the top seven, yeah, you should be up there in the playoffs and that should, that should be comfortable for you. But I think what's doing us in is we're getting the odd result against a decent team. But then we're also having these results where we you know, score four goals away from home against bottom of the league and don't even come away with three points. Yeah. Um, and it's times like that um, that's gonna we're going to shoot ourselves in the foot with things like that. It's an interesting one, isn't it? I mean, our, all season long, we seem to prefer playing against and do better against the better sides in the division. And we seem to struggle against the sides that have basically carved a living by 
essentially having a slightly more agricultural style of play. And if you look at Rochdale and the way their goals came about last week, and all right, they've scored an absolute worldie. But it's a bit like it was going to be, it was always going to be a set piece, wasn't it, that undone us? It was always, and that's been our story of the season. It's like we don't seem to be able to do the ugly things against these ugly teams that throw these big, ugly lumps into the box. It's like we, we just, whether that's the rub of the green with players available to us at the time that maybe could have... So you stick Fraser Blake Tracy on Ian Henderson last week. He doesn't score that call. He doesn't score no. from that corner. He just doesn't. But it was so... It just felt like last week was so glass-jawed. Yeah. And when you, when you go back against, like, you know, suspensions coming up at the wrong time, injuries coming up at the wrong time. On the show, Adam, on Wednesday night, we went through the squad and the general feeling was, actually, even with a few departures at the end of the season... The words, we've got the basis of a good squad. That you doesn't do. mean that we've got a squad now that will get us promoted. But the no. general feeling amongst the panel Wednesday was we've got the basis of a good squad. Yeah, well, for, for, once, upon a, for once in my lifetime supporting Swindon, especially with the last three years um, at this club, for once we're going to be going into a new season with not just one or two contracted players and having to completely rebuild. We've got players on contracts. We've got permanent signings. We don't actually have that many loanies. We got Soul on loan. Who else have we got on loan? Mm. You know, we've managed to keep, keep them all permanent and, you know, a couple year deals, which means, you know, we're not going to be completely rebuilding the squad. It's a very at the start of next season. It's a very interesting point because obviously recruitment's taken a battery and certainly from you know, from, from, from most quarters and certainly from our from our quarter. But I mean, it's it's almost like Joe Tomlinson. It seems a little bit unfair to be kind of lumping him into the mix as because I mean, again, with his appearances sort of so far, obviously cracking debut goal, superb performance against Leighton Orient. But then you know he's he's kind of struggled to brush the rust off, get out there, get a run of games going, picked up an injury again soon after Orient, and then obviously it's, it's he's, he's been missing. It's injuries, but, that's but, all it is. But he is a player that you know has kind of made it quite clear his body language. Little things he said in interviews. He wants to be here next season. He's a Swindon season. boy, isn't he? Yeah, he wants to be here He's next season. Boy. I think that's going to, you know, a lot of that will come down to, yeah. you know, whether I think we all sort of accept that Soul's on a slightly different journey with his career. But yeah. I think with JT, talking about the loanies, I think there is a player that I think it's going to come down to whether or not Jody wants him here next year. But I'll take I, your I, point. I think Adam. a, lot of, these, a lot of these players that we've got in a minute, I think it's also going to come down to how this season finishes. Mm. You know, Charlie's come back. And I, I, I'd be quite confident in saying that if we don't go up this season, we might lose Charlie at the end of the season. You feel that you feel that? Well, he's only here till the end of the season anyway. If we mm. went up, I reckon he would stay for another season mm. to give us sort of like the best chance we got in League One. Because he's still he, he'd still do a job in League One. And to be fair, he's, he wouldn't be out of place in the Championship. I know he's like he's thirty three now. He's still got it. And you know, I think I don't think he wants to stay in League Two for too long. Well. All I'll say is, is this, Adam, to you and the lovely listeners that are tuned in right now. If Charlie's not here next season, I will eat my hat. I will eat. In fact, I'll eat that hat that you're wearing. <laughs> I will eat my hat. I'll eat your hat. No, it's 15 quid. I, I think he's dancing. I think he's dancing to a very, a very different tune. He's happy. But I think if he can still fire in a good amount of goals this season... You know, Bristol Rovers are still in League One, considering they were sniffing around him this window. Uh, if he can get an extra few bob and play in a higher league, but still not have to move his family anywhere, I wouldn't put it past him. But, you know, listen, I mean, again, regular listeners to this show will know that Charlie, Char- Charlie's a good friend of our show. He's, you know, fair to say, we're in, in pretty regular contact. And all, all I will say is that Char- it's never been, it's never been about the money for Charlie. It's never been. Coming back here was not about the money. Coming back here was more about um, it's more about like next steps in football. Yeah. You know, for him Me working out what he wants to do. Yeah. Getting, getting his badges. Working out, does he want to be a manager? Does he want to be a coach? You know, what's the next steps? Um, and welcoming back onto the show, Arch, Ellis, how are we? How was Michael? Yeah, they tried to drag me into it. And oh, they tried to get you to go on the run, did they? No, no, I had to pull out the fastening excuse. So, <laughs> so there's no way in hell I had to run 5k so from it, Angus. Explain to the listeners, because we've sort of teed it up at the start. So I sent you over there on the, uh, on the, uh, request, on the request of CEO Rob Angus, who's just also joined the run. Uh, Rob was like, do you guys want to come over and... and uh, He's do, in a suit five to, minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah incre- <laughs> training kit now. incredible. Yeah, do you want to do you want to go and uh, do you want to come and um, and cover Michael setting off? How was Michael? So obviously they were setting off. Did Michael tell you how long the run is? 
uh, 5K. 5K. So they're doing a cheeky 5K before cheeky. the game. I, I, I would have joined them, but I ran this morning. I've got my uh, my night my night dunks on. You know, I would have joined in. And I've got shin splints. I'll so. tell you what is the deal. The next 5K that they do, the next fun run that Dalton decides to send everyone on, if the club want to kit me out with some training <laughs> gear, I'll go and do a 5K. <laughs> yeah. no, no problem. No so, problem. So let me get this right. The club's, the club's take on an inclusive run was come join Michael Doughty, run 5K. Yes. Yeah, so, and essentially... Yeah. Nothing was... like running quarter of a marathon before a match on a Saturday just to yeah. sort of, you it know... Was cheeky, it, it was Dalton, um, Rob Angus, Jonah... And one other man who I did not know. Oh, I, good I on did him. put a tweet out on the top of this. Can Lounge, we just ask him to play till the end of the season? Well, possibly, well don't worry. Let's get, listen, as I said, <laughs> if you're just tuning in, if you're just tuning in, dear listeners, uh, the score is this. We've got a very, very busy day. We're going to be surprising Michael out on the pitch later. He's going to come out on the pitch with me um, just after 2.30. And Michael's going to do a and a with me on the pitch. But then we're going to present Michael. He doesn't know this, but we're going to be presenting him with a 2019-20 trophy. And Michael's going to finally get the opportunity in his fourth stint at the club to present that to you, the supporters, and hopefully get a rapturous round of applause as he's doing so. And but, hand him a contract. And yeah, we'll try and hand him a contract while I'm at it, Adam. I, I, I make you right. The other thing that we're going to be doing, I have got Heroes of 69. Obviously, we're a week down the line from the anniversary of 1969 uh, on League Cup final day when the Arsenal went to Wembley and Ellis. They walked the Wembley way when they thought they had it easy. They thought they'd won the cup. Then along came Swindon Town FC and you know what happened next. The heroes, two of the heroes of that day, three of the heroes of that day are in the stadium and you lovely listeners are going to get to see all three of them. So I am going to be interviewing none other than um, two goal Wembley hero from that day, Don Rogers um, and John Trollope, MBE, um, whose stand we are sat in now. Um, I'm going to be interviewing them on the pitch um, about all things 69 again before kickoff, and then at half time, we uh, you are going to see a certain Roger Smart making his return to the county ground pitch. So we're sorry, bear with me. My son's trying to have a conversation with me, dear listener, while we're doing this. Well, come on, artist. It's obviously very important. So why are you interrupting the show? Well, just taking AB to the Legends Taking Lounge. Ashley Brown to the Legends Lounge. Well, enjoy that. that have fun. Nice. <laughs> and we'll see you later. I'm sorry, dear listener. My family logistics getting in the way. My son hasn't quite worked out that when dad's, when dad's live on the mic, it's never I'm a good thing to tr- try and have a secondary conversation in your right ear. But hey, listen, we're a little spit and sawdust and we're very proud of that fact. So here we are. So, as I said, we've got Don Rogers, we've got John Trollope, and we've got Roger Smart all in the building today. We've got Michael Doughty in the building. But here's the piece de resistance as well. Fair to say, guys, um, to a lot of Swindon Town fans, six, I mean, give me your perspectives. If I said to you six months ago, tell me about Nigel Weedy, what would that have meant to you? Literally stump faces. That's kind of why I'm... But yeah, exactly. Not a lot, right? Let let me tell you this, right? The, The only reason I would have known about the late Nigel Weedy is from my time here a shirt sponsor and Nigel Weedy used to sit a few rows along from me and I always remember this um, sort of stately gentleman with this really long, well-worn, extra long Swindon Town red and white hooped, hooped um, scarf. Mm. And I'll never forget, he's if, sadly actually, he, I had no idea, his last game by all accounts was Wigan and I seem to remember that was a day when I, I swear blind I remember seeing him in the stands that day as it was a rapturous light. I mean, what a finish, beating Wigan here in the FA Cup. I remember the ground being packed to the rafters. It was a proper FA Cup day. And it, sadly, I didn't know this, but that was his last ever game here at the county ground. Mm. Anyway, fast forward. What do you know of Nigel Eady now, gentlemen? What a lovely man he is. Oh, what an incredible guy, he right? Yeah. He's made history. Isn't it amazing how these heroes, like, it's true heroes come from absolutely nowhere and and the, the gentleman so Nigel Nigel's story of course is that Nigel lost his life and had pledged he had been working up up until um, up until um, his passing he'd been working with his family to ensure that the value of his estate so a wealthy local farmer the value of his estate would pass back to Swindon Town for the betterment of the football club yeah. and so the story goes the trust started having conversations with Nigel Weedy uh, or after Nigel passed away, his money was passed into a fund where it was going to be protected by trustees, the likes of um, John and Rob Carter, um, Jez Webb, um, Gary Herbert, um, amongst others. And the initial conversation was all about putting a roof on the Stratton Bank. And the trustees were like, well, we're not, we don't, you don't own that ground. 
So we're not going to put money into something which is then going to end up being owned by the council because, and then that could end up being demolished and what a waste of money. You can understand the logic. So then in steps, Steve Martin and Trust STSC or Steve's predecessors and Trust STSC started a conversation with the council about, well, hang on a minute, what about if we buy the ground? Now, I don't, I honestly believe that Nigel Eady probably would never have imagined the day where the council would have gone, would you guys like to buy the ground then? Yeah. Now, not being funny, what a legacy for a supporter. Here's a lovely story, right? Every Saturday when I come to the county ground, myself, my kids, we get in the car. At some point on the M4, we have the conversation. It's a regular one. If we won the lottery, what would we do with our money? And we always talk about, what, would you paint a seat gold and just ask the club, like, they do whatever they want with all my money. I just want a little gold seat right on the halfway line or right in the town end, one of my favourite spot. I just love that. That's all I'd want. And you can have whatever you like, and it's yours. And um, it's a little bit like that with Nigel, isn't it? Isn't it amazing? And this guy we didn't even know six months ago is now being spoken of as an absolute deity yeah. in supporting terms. And, I mean, what a day. Listen, look at us. How lucky are we? Like, we're sat here in our ground. Hello, Caroline! Sat here in our ground. Our ground. Look, the sun's beaming down on us. The wind's dropped away. The flags are fluttering. It feels like summer. It's like this, we're talking about Nigel Eady and the sun's come out. I mean, yeah. it's just what a moment. I've got a feeling he's looking. I'm not a deeply religious person. But I've got a feeling he's looking down on us right now. Do you think if he was, he'd like what he sees? He yeah. wouldn't. He, w- he wouldn't. Well, big Hannah's big Ellis and big Adam yeah. bossing, <laughs> bossing it on the comfy Of course, everyone would love that. But what, in all seriousness, like what? If he, you know, imagine he's looking down on all of this. What, how must he feel? His life's work, his family fortune has been spent on securing this. What everything you see here for the betterment of supporters that come to this ground, for the betterment of the football club. I mean, this place is, this, what he's done, what they've been able to secure with that purchase is going to be the foundation stone on which everything moving forward for Swindon Town is going to be built upon. Well, this, this is the thing. All, of my, all these conversations I've had with friends uh, over the years since supporting Swindon, there's always been one reoccurring theme of what holds Swindon back from going anywhere in the Football League. And that's renting the ground off the council. Yeah. Every season having to sell your best players to get use a bit of that money to pay the rent. Now it's ours. That's something we haven't got to worry about. It's ours now. If that wants if the Stratton Bank over there wants a roof on it, if we want to make the town end a little bit bigger, you know, we wanna this arcos, has this ever been touched since it was built? Hardly. <laughs> I'm not too sure. Well, apart I remember from a, apart from a Adam, paint. Adam, I remember the day. So sat here, so we've chosen to come and stick sit ourselves in Mr. Morfuni's seat for the benefit of this show. It's a little, it. It's a no, it's a little bit breezy, isn't it? Pitch side, a little bit breezy. So we've um, <laughs> so <laughs> please don't drop the trophy, Ellis. So we've <laughs> we've we've decided to we decided to come and sit ourselves here, right? And I remember the day, so literally what, two rows in front of us here, this bottom row of seats. I remember the days where that wasn't here. That was all grassed, led into what is now the Legends Lounge. And you'd have fans in the summer sat on like the grassy patch or the sandy patch down there. So this is relatively new from here down. Yeah, I am. I know I have a proper (laughs) crusty. And they used to just be like a fire escape. In fact, I remember my very first game, Adam, up there in the away end. my, my, My old uncle used to steward up there. And I was stood up with him. And I remember him leading me down so I can go and stand behind the goal in the Stratton Bank. He led me down the stairs, down this little fire escape. Yeah, windy fire escape on the front of the stand, around the pitch and off into the, into the Stratton Bank. So like next you'll be telling us she was watching Chris Kamara in the 70s with the two stands. Uh, no, I'm not that old, mate. No. <laughs> and road no, 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 no. I'm definitely not that old. <laughs> but listen, so, um, all right, but listen, I mean, I, all, all clearly... <sighs> I mean, there's so much that we can say about um, the ED Trust. A couple of things. I mean, everyone that comes to the ground today is going to be given an opportunity or they'll be handed a brochure um, by the um, uh, Trust membership. And I just wanted to read a little bit for you, which kind of just is a nice way of rounding off the story. So back in... fans up to date throughout via public meetings and other media appearances and we've spent over a hundred thousand pounds along the way and if it were not for the outstanding free support of the trust lawyers james mason and greg callard those costs would have been much much higher 
Overall, this has been a tremendous team effort with many trust board members, football club representatives, external advisors involved. It's been a long and challenging um, uh, road that has uh, tested our resolve on many occasions. So it's tremendously satisfying to finally say we got there and our club supporters now own the county ground and we're going to park it there. Because just to my right... It's Kit Ran Hoops. How are we, Hoops? Yeah, good, you. Yeah. Look at you staring at the just, 2020 I, trophy. You can't get enough. Do you know what I mean? We Someone were, get a picture of this we man getting tweeted. Like, we were allowed to, like, stand with it for about 30 <laughs> seconds before we had to put it down and then sanitize everything. Oh, now you can give it a proper kiss and everything. This is beautiful. Make sure you're getting this, Ellis. Yeah, Make sure right. you're getting this. Skid marks on get rid of all of that. <laughs> so, Hoops, we're just putting the case for and the case against promotion this year. And I'm very much for, what's your, what's, what's your gut feel? I know you can't betray any confidences, but town, not only hoops are you kit man, but park your professional side and talk to me because you're also an avid supporter of our beautiful football club. So where's your head at? Uh, win today, it's on, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. I'd say so. Because a lot of the teams around us have fallen over. And they're playing each other today, so I think Mansfield are playing Sutton today. Yeah. This is the thing, Hoops, isn't it? Everyone seems to think that, or seems to lose sight of the fact that this is a bonkers division when they're not talking about Swindon Town. So if they're yeah. talking about they're talking about us and they're looking at you know the progress of the rest of the league, everyone's a little bit like, well, oh well, you know, they, they talk about it as though like not everyone else saying is saying that we're out of form or we're whatever we are. We've lost one in six. None of those other teams up there have lost one in six. They're all losing. They're all drawing. You know, we, people think that we're uh, inconsistent, maybe, but so is everybody else. That's what League Two is. And if you string two or three wins together, you're right there. So, especially when you're playing against like the teams around you, yeah. and all of our home games except probably on the last day are all against teams around us and above us. So, if you win those games, you're, you're right in it, isn't you? Mm. That's how I see it. And the vibes, obviously, Hoops, I mean, we've been following the new Life of a Kitman podcast. Congratulations, uh-huh. by the way. Thank you very much. It's absolutely flying. Um, lovely thing about that is that I think it really does give you a kind of a vibe that only you... It, like, everyone knows that you and Jonah have got that. You've, you've got that little hub. You've got that role within the club where, yeah, you're the Kitmen, but you're also sort of vibe meisters, it's fair to say. Oh, but you, you get a real flavour as to where the boys' heads are at. And Willow this week was a great example. Like, us utterly chipper. Um, positive. Um, you know, yeah, he's got that... He's, he's very understated, Willow, isn't he? Oh, very yeah, understated yeah. character. But, yeah, everything's done with a smile and positivity. He's brilliant. So, like, the vibe amongst the players, obviously, we've, we've seen a few of the boys already today. Um, they've all got their tails up, haven't they? There's, no, oh, yeah, nobody, there's nobody here that's sort of tossed in the, you know... But everyone knows. Thrown in the towel. Today... And then we've got Hartley Paul Way next Saturday. If you can get six, four points, whatever, out of these two games, you know, other team, not everyone's winning. Mansfield yeah. and Sutton can't both win today. A lot of six Because they're playing each other. So, and when we have Mansfield here, or we have, who else have we got here? Barrow. You know, you win those games, they're losing points while you're gaining points. So, just, just need to turn this place into a fortress for the rest of the season. That's what you need. That's what it is. You need support. So here's a um, Michael Doughty memories hoops. So we, <laughs> I was just playing two touch with him in the we, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And now he's gone for a run with Jonah. Uh, it's bonkers. So here we, here we are. He doesn't know we're going to be surprising him with a 2019 trophy and, and offering him a lap of honour today. He never got a chance to do that back in 2020 because of COVID. I'll tell you what he did do, though. The day that we had our presentation here where it was all distance and everything else, he rang Domino's with no one knowing. Domino's turned up loads of pizzas for everyone and we were all sat out on the pitch eating pizzas courtesy of Michael Doughty. How amazing is that? A lovely <laughs> Michael Doughty story. What's give us get us under the skin of, of, of Doughty's hoops? Because he's he's not your typical footballer because obviously everyone knows he's unbelievably well educated. He comes from very privileged background in terms of being the son of the late um Nigel Doughty, former owner of Nottingham Forest. Yeah. Um he's never that's never a card that Michael's ever played, is it? In yeah. fact, every time I've met with Michael, yeah. you almost get the impression it's sort of something he likes to kind of yeah. like hide away from but he's not your typical footballer, is he, is what I'm no, trying no, to say. Well, well how you would can, you describe it? You him? can see by the way he ended his career. He was like, No, I play this to enjoy football. Like if I'm not enjoying it if there's other things in my life I'll step away from it because if I can't do something 100% then I'm not going to do it at all yeah and that, I mean, I've been talking to him today and he, he I mean he's he's running everywhere now so he's fitter than most of the boys that are playing Lee too 
So he could come and play, but it's that commitment to needing, you know, yeah. being in every day and devoting all of your time to that. Yeah, and I feel like good. unless you unless he's like 100 percent in it. Then he doesn't want to give a sixty percent or a seventy percent. Do you know what I mean? What was he like amongst? I mean, that was a phenomenal squad of characters, no, wasn't it? It's was like the nineteen twenty yeah. squad. You know, Yates, Doyler, Granty, Steve Bender, Caddis. Like you, I mean, you had leaders throughout that squad, but big characters as well. How, how did he fit into that dynamic? Like uh, what? they just all bounced off each other. Like even people like Danny Rose. Danny Rose was massive for that group. He's so understated, Danny Rose, isn't it? I feel guilty that I haven't even mentioned his name. No, but that, that's the point. Is he so understated, but yet so important when you go through that tunnel and you're on the other side? You know, and then when, if a player was suspended or injured or whatever, he'd step in, you wouldn't even realise that player had gone because he'd be so good. But he got, it, like, there was there was a core group of people in that squad. And Doubts was one of the main people in that, in that core group. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. So, are you, I mean, what is it... Obviously, I know as a friend what it must mean to you to be able to see doubts back in back in the county ground. But what, what do you think it means to the club? What do you think it means to the collective? Indeed, does it even have an impact on this squad? Like, what what does Michael being back um, that as part of the fabric mean? I don't know if it has too much of an impact on the squad in terms of like them seeing him because having stepped away from football, it's been two or three years, and a lot of the lads now are young lads that would have only been 18, 19, yeah. even 17 at the time, you know? So I don't know if it has too much of an impact on the current players, but on like, you know, us, if you're feeling down, you turn around and Michael Doughty's still there. Or if you're doubting anything, Michael Doughty's still there. You go, oh, hello, mate. How are you? You know? Yeah. And suddenly you're like, you're on it again. So And just, and let's just put this into perspective. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of the business career that I had, um, that went on for a fair old, fair old sort of stint. But Michael's gone and talk about business careers first. Michael had a phenomenally successful football like career as a footballer. Won pots at Swindon Town, played for some big clubs. Now Michael's he's about doing things hundred percent. Michael's gone and launched the performance sportswear brand. Like what an unbelievably competitive field in a world where kids are obsessed with, and I say kids in vertical commas. Nike, Adidas, Puma, and then there's a big step down to all the challenger brands. Michael's undoubted, un- undoubted, undaunted by any of that. He's got to launch the performance sports brand and he's decided to take them all on. And crucially, well, being sustainable, yeah. he's got a bloody good chance of, of eating a lunch for him. It's well, brilliant. You can all... right. Here's one for you. I'm going to take my shoe off. <laughs> <laughs> Inside my shoe, what does it say in there? It says, end plastic waste. Right. So what Adidas... Because I haven't got a high low. I, I tried to get a pair, but he won't have none of it. Um, I need to buy them, I think. I think I'll get 20% off yeah. if I donate some trainers. So will everybody if they go and donate their trainers in the bin outside the club shop. That's correct. Um, but I feel like a lot of other companies are seeing what he's doing. And they're trying to jump on it with mm. the sustainability thing. Yep. And if, if what he's doing creates a culture change in those things... I'm pretty sure he'd be like... He'll be the leading man yeah, for it. Yeah, he'd be like, job done. Yeah. yeah I've, I've created a change in the culture and how these things are uh, produced and, uh, you know, sustainability of everything. Now, so, speaking, of, speaking of sustainability, we've given them a little hint there. Big day for us today. So, the Saturn Broadbent Lounge, the Official Supporters Club, the Trust and Hilo Athletic have launched a brand new recycling centre, commonly known as a bin, branded, <laughs> outside the club shop where we are inviting people to come and recycle their old trainers um, and, um, yeah, essentially engage with what we're doing with Hilo. So you'll notice there'll be QR codes. You'll notice that there'll be website addresses, things to go to learn more about sustainability, more about um, the impact of waste by not recycling your old trainers, your old performance wear. Um, So we're delighted to be um, involved in that respect today. Absolutely thrilled. Um, we uh, and as I say, we've launched it with Michael going off on a 5k run. So, uh, in a nice circular narrative, um, he's uh, he's what well, they'll be about three quarters of the way through that hoops. Right. Would you say at the moment? They're meant to be sending me some content to put on. Uh, we open the club's going to let him use the the up, yeah, they, they tried to drag me in to record behind them. But... He tried to drag me in to run. Yeah. <laughs> said, Are you all right, mate? Not a chance. But there you go. I need to go and do some work. Lovely to see you, hoops. So, Thanks, nice mate. To see you. Yeah. 
keep That's keep going brilliant. keep going with the podcast, pal. Keep we need going. To win today. That's the most important thing. Hey, we'll the take, podcast is fun. We'll hold you to that. But we need to win today. We'll hold you to that. Right. See you later, hoops. Well, there you are, Steve yeah. Hooper. So, um, and what's not been said about hoops? Um, real beating heart stuff when it comes to our football club. And I tell you what, what I love about what's happening with our football club. I tell you what I love, and I tell you why I love what because hoops kind of typifies it for me. Um, you'll remember me being out on the pitch a couple of weeks ago and there was some pretty poisonous stuff that got punting around on the socials. Um, and people even made comments along the lines of, uh, it's another illustration of the club cutting corners. I completely disagree. i tell you what I see from the club, right? I see the club looking at all of its possible assets and actually using its brain and saying, how do we get the most out of this? How do we get the most out of that? How do, if we open the door here, how do we get someone to step in and try and help us with our objectives? And that, for me, is typified with what they're doing with Hoops and Jonah. Because Hoops and Jonah have got this wonderful... I'm lucky enough that I've, I've been sort of essentially... I've had an eye on behind the scenes of the club for a very long time, mainly, mainly because of the legacy of me being a former, former shirt sponsor here. So I've always been made to feel like part of the family, for want of a better word. They've got this term, a friend of the football club. And they've always extended that out to me, um, which has been lovely. But it's been a, apparent to me that Hoops and Jonah are literally like, if Johnny Williams is the vibe meister of Wales, Hoops and Jonah are the vibe meisters at Swindon Town Football Club. And the lovely thing about life of a kit man, Hoops and Jonah were doing that before the club asked yeah. them to start doing what they're doing they now. Put a camera on it. And now what they've said is, actually, you guys are the kit men. We get that. But actually... You can help us with our comms, with interviewing players, with helping fans get a feel for what we're all about, opening the door to our football club, feeling more engaged. It's no surprise to me the club have gone from 92nd in the engagement league, fan engagement league, to inside the top 20 now because of things like this. Well, you say cutting corners when it comes to the match day uh, atmosphere and whatnot. The bloke who was doing it beforehand, is it was it, it was Jay... Who is he? Um, he does the DJing as well. Yeah, Jay's up in the box. Jay Hayden. Yeah, you've gone from Jay, who did a cracking job. It's not the fact that they're cutting corners. He's just they've given you an opportunity. Someone who's been around the club, the fan focus thing. Obviously, a lot of people are starting to recognise your voice from the Twitter spaces and whatnot. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would I would say that that's not cutting corners at all. I think you've got someone that the fans sort of you know are dedicated to listening to on a Wednesday and a. You know, some Saturday Saturdays before the game, um, it's a voice from the podcast. It's, it's they've almost, opened it's the doors. Like they've, yeah, they've, they've the opened the doors and but, let you be a part of the match day atmosphere. But isn't it lovely that you know, like if you you've got hoops and I guess my point is you've got hoops. All right, take if you want to go me, right? So you have got me. I'm I'm here. We're doing this show today. Hannah, do you actually the crowd could do with a bit of a rev up before the game? And actually, how do you fancy interviewing some big names, like giving people a bit of a bit of what you do on a Wednesday night, but on a Saturday? Obviously, week one, slightly different because the club dropped a ball or two with regards to me being able to speak to people on the day. Hoops and Jonah, you guys pack the kit away. You're so important to the fans, uh, to the players. Wouldn't it be lovely if you could foster a similar kind of vibe with our fans, as well as giving fans a window on what it is you do and the relationships you've got within the... That is priceless. Absolutely priceless. And, and the more and more, like you look at the way that we've bought the ground. Like yeah. the, the owner has basically got into bed with the supporters and gone, right, OK, well, obviously the funding has come from Nigel Weedy, but all the future investment, you know, development on the ground, this and the other, yeah, the trust are going to be driving a load of that. Clem's going to be facilitating the rebuilds, the, you know, the maintenance, the, you know, the running of the club, you know, transfers, etc. It's, it's like the doors have been open. It's such a shame. For me, I feel very sad at times that, the natural so don't get me wrong i think it's really important that we're cautious because we've been through so much in the last 30 years we've had our we've been kicked in the gonads to quote um to uh, quote jody morris from leighton orient who's been down ki- there been kicked yes there he is right in front of us but you you see get him up <laughs> yeah, yeah you see um you see our club's been kicked in the nuts so many times over the last 30 years so i understand why fans are instinctively cautious but at the same time like turn up at the game in your numbers today guys <laughs> christ if you're at home and you're umming and ahhing about listening. I mean, it's always nice we see, look, we've got loads of listeners on this podcast, but if you're sat at home and you're having an iron, get your arse down here. You've just heard from who's. We, this ground is ours. Come and enjoy it. Come and revel in the moment. Look, the, the thing is, right, you, you, can, you can question the football inside of, of, of the football club. Um, you know, we're, we're always going to go 
three waves. We're not going to be winning um, every game, every season. But the direction that the club is heading in, um, the behind the scenes, yeah, it, the, the 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 business side, if you'd like, of the football club is is probably the best that has been in in a very very long time. Um, you know, we we've we've bought the ground. Um, j- like how many Clem, clubs in League Two the, can the, say that they own their stadium? Exactly, the, all the debt we're paying off. It's the the business side of the football club is the best it it all pretty much has ever been, and that is only going to eventually help the football side. Now, when Clem took over this club, it was it was a shit show. Let's be honest, um, it, it wasn't great. The the club was on brink of. Do you think fans collapse. fully? Do you think fans understood the actual extent? Of the mess that was behind the scenes, probably oh, not. And I'm going to be honest. Even as a as a former shirt sponsor, even I didn't understand the extent of how bad it was yeah. behind the scenes. Because it's one thing looking at a spreadsheet and looking at the numbers and going, "Oh yeah, it's so bad." Look, because we owed X amount of money. Right, park that for a second. You've got to think about right when it comes to running a business. You've got to think about morale. Like you know, who's Christ? Like. Imagine how miserable, how 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 broken people felt. It's you know, players. Yeah, so no no playing staff, Br- totally broken morale. Everyone yeah. worried about losing their job. Everyone and, and picking up the pieces after basically sort of the 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 pride swallowing, gut wrenching siege that is like actually being in a position where you can't pay your mortgage. Yeah. Well, you can't like. Okay, I don't want to be. You know, I've, I'm. I hold my hand up. I'm lucky enough that I've never been in a position where I've defaulted on my mortgage. Yeah. Right. Through no fault of my own or through fault of my own. I've, I thank the, I thank heavens above that I've never been in that position. But I've seen my parents go through times in life where financially things were bad. Mm. Things were bad, and and the the crippling effect that that had, in particular, on my dad. Like his his pride, his you know. And, and it's almost like seeing him go through, like, suffer a serious injury and then have to pick himself up. Like, psychologically, the damage. I mean, we're, we're a lot more aware of mental health, right? Yeah. But think about people behind the scenes at the county ground. There were people here that could not pay their mortgage, had to call their mortgage companies or had to literally sort of, you know, sort of put, the, put, put the begging bowl out. And I mean that in, with all due respect. Like, I am literally in a really bad state. Like, please, can someone help me here with my mortgage? And, yeah. and people like the trust stepped in to help pay people's mortgages. So it's easy to look at the financial spreadsheet. It's another thing to look at, like, the, the actual, actual cataclysm that swept through the club behind the scenes. Because it's not just a game. Football, football's not just a game. Quite literally, it is people's livelihoods. It is... You know, for a lot of people that work in and around this club, it's how they get through life. It's how they get by. It's how they, like you say, it's how they pay for their house. It's how they put food on their table. And do you know what? Um, the success of last season, you know, get get into the playoff semi final, pro- it probably, you know, blinded how bad the club, the state the club was in. Um, we should have got relegated last season. If you looked at, you know, Pre-season, you looked at our squad, ten players. You, well, well, you, that, <laughs> no, well, you, you would say this club is getting relegated. Mm. There, there's absolutely no chance they're surviving, let alone even make the playoffs. And I think the su- the success of last season um, probably softened. Yeah, yeah, and, and I, had, I had an argument, Ellis, this week with someone where I described I described last season as a free hit. To me, that's that sounded fairly logical. I was like, well, it was clearly a free hit last season. Expectations were so low. We've got a new manager, a whole new squad of players. Group I think most, most people just, yeah, exactly. Group of misfits. Harry McCurdy even said that to us. Our awards at the end of last season. He just said, I was just happy to have got a job. Yeah. It wasn't about any love or affection for Swindon. I just needed a job. And he got it. And and the rest, as we know, is history. We need to get Jody up there, I'm telling you. Well, <laughs> yeah, wouldn't that be nice? I think it's so there's jo- man, down there with us. The, yeah, down there with the sponsors. Um, and being chaperoned by a club, being chaperoned by a club official, literally oh. forced back down the players' tunnel. But, <laughs> but, but to but, but to the point, like last season for me personally, felt like a free hit, and other supporters have told me they felt the same. Yeah. I don't think any you'll remember the night Ellis we were broadcasting and um, Ben Garner just suddenly resigned. I don't think any of us saw that coming. No, it, it, um, it was out of the blue. And then that seemed to. I saw that. There was a there was then a, a spiral of changes, wasn't there? Ben yeah. Chorley left the club. And then, obviously, we had the appointment of a new technical director in Sandro Di Michele. 
we had the appointment of the new manager eventually in um, Scott Lindsay, who was already at the club, but it was a coach. And at the time, it was like, do we give the guy, you know, benefit of the doubt? Or, but it... Well, we lost half the squad as yeah, well. We, yeah. Exactly that. The rebuild was almost immediate. And because of where we were last season, there was this sort of simmering anger that, hang on a minute, let's hope we're not losing an opportunity here to build on what we did last season. Yeah. Let's, we, we don't want to tolerate that again. The, the, the trouble is, though, we, we overachieved by a mile last season. Um, With the and, 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 and do you know what? Um, the, where we are now in, in, in the league table... Um, in context of of start of last season, this is where we should be. Mm. Um, but obviously, how the season, uh, you know, eventually finished, we're 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 in a different situation now. We're, we're as fans, we're all hoping for mm. a little bit more promotion. Just set but, the standards too high last but, season. I think. Yeah, it, it, it's tricky. And, yeah. Um, you know, we we are a big club. Look, we we now own this this stadium right here. So now it's about, it's almost like, I mean, I, 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 I don't know. I was talking, to, talking to Hoops a little bit, um, not not portraying any confidences, but talking to him a little bit off air earlier. Kind of get the flavour. It's a little bit like, look, there's not a lot to be lost, not a lot to be lost in almost drawing the line under the season so far and going, now on, between now and the end of the season, every game's a cup final. Yeah. Every game's a cup final. We own this ground. There's a feel-good factor. We can, as a group of supporters, get behind what's in the dressing room and we, you know, that they have told me, though I have had multiple individuals from that dressing room tell me, one to one, they are a dressing room that responds to a crowd. Yeah. Well, last season, that th- those last five games of, of the season where we had to win all five games to basically ensure our place in the playoff. Um, the, the, the game against Barra at home. Do you remember? Oh, what was it? Shoot. Eight, yeah, what was it? Eight, eight year, <laughs> eight year minute, we, we, can, we concede one all. The... the the spirit of the team to come back and get that winner mm-hmm. to then to, uh, to then essentially Three put us into the playoffs. Three points automatics we finished. It's, out it's doable. It's do, doable, is Ellis, is what you're saying. But look, basically, if we if we if we were to win, there's 30 points up for grabs. I'm not saying we're going to win every game between now and the end of the season. That puts us into I think it's 81 points, something yeah. like that, and that puts us snugly into what I believe will be the playoff p- uh, picture based on last season's um, uh, last season's uh, uh, standings. Yeah. Now, granted, it's much, it's, it, it, you, if you look at how competitive it is at the top of the table, it, yeah, it is, but it's also very, very unpredictable. So, for me, it feels like we've got it all to play for. I'll just read out. So we had a couple of tweets come through. Hello, Paul. Paul Merriman's tweeted. Um, thank you for tweeting us, Paul, as we sit here basking in the sun. Actually, he says, as it slips behind a rain cloud, um, overlooking our beautiful pitch. And Paul says, not many people think about the human elements of football before they put finger to tweet, and that's a little disappointing. We must have continual positivity to produce on and off the pitch. It's kind of what we're saying, isn't it? It feels to me, guys, they're sort of within our gift as a supporter base. What have we got to lose between now and the end of the season? Just go all guns blazing. Just get behind the bloody fans. Uh, get behind the players. Just gun it like there, there is not. There, what's to be? What what is to be lost? There was something that used to, someone used to say to me. I had a fantastic football coach when I was a younger man, and I was still playing a relatively decent standard of football. But he always used to say to me, every time you go on the pitch, come off with no regrets. I wonder how many Swindon Town supporters, when they come through the turnstile on a Saturday, actually have a similar attitude. Just get behind the team for 90 minutes and walk out and say no regrets. Because think about it, right? How many people would go home and go, hang on a minute, if maybe I hadn't been booing after five minutes yeah. or, or upset Johnny Williams, who quite clearly was upset in the last home game when he walks off the pitch, and Charlie Austin a couple of games prior, if I hadn't got into their heads in the way that I did, maybe that could have been the marginal game between an assist or a goal or a point versus no point or three points versus a point. Yeah. I wonder how many people actually think about that. When I just got to reiterate, we have a dressing room that have openly stated we respond to this crowd. Yeah. We respond to this crowd. We hear you. We feel you. We need you. It's a cynical fan base. And I think it's only down to us as a fan base to change that. You know, I'm, I'm guilty myself of, you know, getting very upset at the final whistle I think for the first time in my life as a football fan I actually left early a few weeks ago uh, about five minutes early but Adam that's um, final whistle stuff that's your t- yeah. at the final whistle yeah. you, you, you can't do um, that five, five minutes into the game we, we play a backwards pass fans go absolutely mental like we've just conceded yeah, it's, two it's goals it's not needed it's, it, that booing right 
five minutes into a game is going to do the opposite of what you want it to do. Well, like, like Hannah said, you know, there's, are you going to sit in your car and regret the fact that you rooted for the team, even if they weren't playing to the quality that you thought they should be playing? Yeah. You know, all right, someone might call you a bit of a dick for trying to get behind them because they're the ones that want to boo after five minutes. But who cares? Who cares it's indeed? A, it's a, I think it's a small minority in what is normally a 10,000 crowd. Well, listen, I, I can I can honestly tell you I've experienced the vagaries of the, the noisy minority versus the silent majority. Personally, it's been a humbling experience for me the last couple of, couple of weeks. Experiencing the le- levels of that kind of cynicism and negativity. And, well, there's someone trying to do something positive. Actually, let's just take a pot shot at that individual versus the kind of outpouring of support that then followed in the week yeah. like preceding, which I really... If you were part of that and you're listening in, I, honestly, I, I, haven't, I haven't got the words. And we've already been there, done that. Mm. But to your point, um, I completely agree, Adam. Listen, we'll give the, we've had a, we're having our, our usual listener churn. So um, just to fill you in on the plans for today, uh, dear listeners, um, if you weren't here at the start of the show, we've got so many exciting plans uh, for On Pitch today. Um, so we're currently broadcasting. Basking in the sun, sat here in the comfy seat, sat in Mr. Morphoonie's seat up in the Arkles, <laughs> glancing down on the pitch, which looks absolutely beautiful. And we'll watch Marcus put the finishing touches to that earlier. That it absolutely looks beautiful. The sun is beaming down. The yeah, winds the winds drop right down as well. Yeah, and we're, black nylon, yeah, we're, so, yeah. yeah, we're all wrapped up. But here's the exciting things about the plans today. So um, get to your seats at 2.30, guys. Like, do not. What you will not want to miss, who I've got coming on the pitch with me today, get to your seats at two thirty, because at two uh, two thirty between two thirty and two forty, I'm going to be introducing um, a week on from the anniversary of 1969 League Cup final. I'm going to be introducing the inimitable John Trollope, MBE. And Don Rogers, two-goal hero from 15th of March 1969, are going to be joining me for a Q&A on the pitch. Um, you, won't, you are not going to want to miss that. We've got a revamped playlist again. We're not going to just keep tuning out, churning out the same old crud. So Jay up in the DJ box is going to have you all bouncing in between. And then at approximately 2.40, between 2.40, 2.45, we've got a lovely little surprise for you. Making his return, his fourth stint at the county ground is Swindon Town's new head sustainability officer, Michael Doughty. He's going to be joining me on the pitch. But what Michael doesn't know is joining Michael on the pitch is going to be the 2019-2020 League Cup final trophy. And Michael's never had the opportunity to present that himself to the supporters. We managed to get Paul Caddis to do that um, a few weeks back, you'll recall, regular listeners. Um, but now we've got Michael Doughty will have the opportunity to present and do a bit of a lap of honour. So please get to your seats bright and early. And then just prior to kickoff, I'm going to be inviting the ED trustees, led by John and uh, Rob Carter, um, who are basically the guys that signed the cheque to buy this ground. They're going to be welcomed by myself onto the pitch and they're going to be joined by Rob Angus and Steve Mighton, uh, who are going to be um, providing John uh, Carter himself the, signa- the, the signature on the cheque. Um, with a Trust Hero Award. So if ever you wanted the opportunity to come and thank the people that have essentially um, followed through with Nigel's wishes and made the necessary investments to make this county ground yours, you're going to have an opportunity. It's a big moment. It really is. This is the first game where we can truly say this is our home. Um, This game, this moment isn't going to happen again. The the, the first game in our our own stadium in which we own. Um, of course, thanks to Nigel Eder. Your first, and like, and look at the date. Like, listen, it sounds like I'm I'm doing a job for the ticket office here, but I'm literally squinting. I'm I'm roasting hot. It's a beautiful day. It's like a summer's day, isn't yeah. it? The pitch looks amazing. Um, Stockport are going to bring, we think, about 800 supporters with them, so they're going to be really well supported. Day, they're resurgent. They're pushing for the playoffs themselves, like pushing potentially. They can even gun for automatics, given where they are. So they're going to be well up for it. Yeah, we're in for we're a on, cracking game. We're on our patch. You heard from Kitman Hoops earlier in terms of what the vibe is behind the scenes. The general feeling is it's still on. These boys have not thrown in the towel. You know, these boys need you here. They need you here and behind them. Yeah, so I now's the opportunity. So as we uh, glance over our shoulders, how are we, Andrew Hawes? How are we, chap? 
Are you able to? Are you able to come and join us on the comfy seats, Andrew? Well, listen. Someone, please get a photo of Andrew and this wonderful trophy. Get that on our on our on our Twitter feed because I I think you put in. You, you put in the mileage that uh, that season, Andrew, and it's nice to see you with the. the, number, the uh, number one it's nice to see uh, you. Yeah, it's nice to see you with the uh, with the silverware. Yeah, That's nice. quite a contrast to the COVID season that you had to endure, Andrew, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, no, it's, 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 How things changed in the yeah. in the in the space of one season. Yeah, no, happier, happier days, happier days. So we'll 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 get this with your permission, Andrew. We'll get that out on Twitter with with the and we're saying we're not overselling it, Andrew. Should, just, it, should it amuse? You? Should it please you to do so? Then, we, then we were just saying to our beautiful listeners that you're we are basking in the sunshine. There's a beautiful pitch behind us. Indeed. How are you feeling about the um, how are you feeling about the running, Andrew? Because um, behind the scenes, there seems to be this vibe of well, we've got you know like ten or cup finals now. Between now and the end of the season, thirty points to play for. They they've not thrown in the towel. How are you feeling from up in the box? It's um it's going to happen now. I I'd have to be honest and say from what we've seen on the past three or four games, we can't quite see where that winning run's coming from. But um if they don't believe it, no one else does. So it, it's just as well that it's just as well they do. Um they've got a I think they've got a harder sell on the the rest of the population to to say that. Yeah, indeed. Are still, are still on. I mean, the story, we we tried to keep our powder dry on Wednesday, Andrew, mainly because of time. It was a cracking show Wednesday night, but we didn't get a chance to talk about Rochdale. And I don't want to drag us all down <laughs> because obviously the, the national media seized on the fact that Charlie smashed four super goals. But there was another story at the other end of the pitch where, quite frankly, it was hapless. Yeah, no, I, I think... I think both sides would uh, be not far off Danny Baker video territory. <laughs> with, some, with some of the some of the defending, I mean, the, the third, the, like the third rock star goal, especially that you know Darcy gives a bad pass away and Odo just you know runs into the edge of the penalty area and scores completely, completely unchallenged. You can see people like diving in and selling themselves for different goals, and you know the, the, fir- the first ones not everyone playing offside. So it, it was a whole a whole exciting uh, comedy of errors, but it, it made for. It, Made for better entertainment than Walsall if, uh, if the point the points is at the end is the same. But potentially big big changes though. We've got a few returning heroes. We're hoping. It sounded in the press that there was some positivity in relation to um, Joe Tomlinson returning. Yeah. Fraser Blake Tracy. The concerns about George, uh, George McEachern and his knee seem to have subsided. And of course, we've got the return of Saidu Khan after five games out. Those are four of what you would refer to as our marquee players, aren't they? Yeah, no, they are. They are. They are significant names. Aren't they? Um, I, I wonder how much risk they'll take with Blake Tracy, whether they'll try and ease him back in, if they possibly can. Because as you say, it's a, it's a tricky dilemma. You probably wouldn't want to rush him when you think about next season. But um, if anything is going to come of this season, as we said, it's got to come now. So, so they've got to. Look at that carefully. It'd be great to have Tomlinson back. Um, so, so yeah, and and Khan will add some height apart from anything else at the back, which is a, a thing of a thing of beauty for the uh, the dreaded set pieces. And Agent Hawes has been doing his bit this week, and uh, unfortunately, the general didn't make his way back to the county ground. He's, no. he's gone the blinking crawl. He's decided to go down the M23. Well, no, did you see that coming? I know he said that he'd been waiting. That there was likely he was going to sign for someone. What was your take? Um, no, I was a bit surprised. He'd done. Um, he said to me he was going to be training with FC Wimbledon for a bit because they've got a lot of injuries and they, they can't put seven subs out. But he's, he's kept the craw- he's kept his Crawley pounds are pretty dry, I think. But when, when I spoke when I spoke to him, he's kind of on our off. I don't I don't think he wants to bow out in the way he did at Scunthorpe. So, but there is a big risk of that, isn't yeah, there, Andrew, for yeah. him? Well, that would be a not. A, I don't want to jinx the guy, yeah. but I've not got a lot of love for Crawley. They're just down the road from me. They're one of those grounds where I kind of go, every time I walk in, I, I sigh and say to myself, we've got to get out of this division. Exactly. It's, it's a reminder of your reduced status. Yeah, it, re- yeah. it very much yeah. is. So, But at the same time, if you were to say, well, hang on a minute, two players that could possibly help them out of a hole, Ben Gladwin, yeah. Anthony Grant, are probably two of the players that you might think of. Yeah, well, right, well, the, the interesting enjoy thing, your run. The interesting thing about sort of doing the, the commentary with them is how he doesn't he doesn't mince his words, so I'm sure even though he's only just arrived there, he will he will be one of those people who sort of drive standards. I think he will, you know, demand quality from people in training and so on. So he will, I'm sure he will help in that way as well as, you know, maybe coming on and just helping them to hold it together. I mean, they, you know, they've just they're just starting to get a little run going into time. Hartlepool keep grinding out draws. Um, Colchester might be getting dragged into it. I can they see, might. Which are, I can see the Schadenfreude radiating. I, I know, I know that uh, who I would much rather of our of our former, of, of our class yeah. of twenty two, if we want to call them that. I know who I'd much rather be seeing sort of uh, go through the trapdoor 
And uh, I think I'd much rather see uh, a certain Ben Garner go through the trap door out of principle than Messrs um, Grant and Gladwin. But at the same time, I'm sort of stuck between a rock and a hard place there because, like I said, it's Crawley, and I've not got yeah. I've not got a lot of time for crypto. I don't, no, <laughs> but I have a lot of time for Anthony Grant and yeah, a lot of no, time for Ben Gladwin. Yeah, no, it's 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 um, it's a shame what's happened in terms of the ownership. I think I, I don't think it needed a genius to say that that might unravel quite. Quite quickly. It's never um, been allowed in the first place, but that's you know that's the EFL. Yeah, yeah, no, there's there's a whole there's a whole like debate about what the fit and proper person test should entail, isn't there? And uh, I think I think mainly at the moment it's just a uh, are you are you not a considerably confirmed rogue of the very worst order with several spells behind bars? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, how you how you kind of how they can kind of do that and have it stand up to legal scrutiny, I suppose, is the, the big question. But but yeah, and the kind of ongoing ownership and. And the people who get control of clubs, as we know, from past experience, is not satisfactory. Not necessarily, no. So give us a give us your your flight, Andrew. You you hate predictions and whatnot. Yeah, and, so and you, and you and but you you never you never shy away from telling me who's up in the box for you today. Who have you got up in the box? We've got uh, Dave Hooker Day today. Dave Hooker Day. I should say my. I noticed my predictions have been in recent consistently useless. In that I was, <laughs> you know, I thought we'd do quite well against Doncaster. I said Harrogate had quite a good defence, which was clearly not true. Uh, which, which, which actually, I mean, goes slightly off on a tangent to one point. I think we get a kind of weirdly skewed sense of the division because of the way we play, because we're not really like anyone else. Mm-hmm. So, because I, I was listening to a bit of Dave Chalon and Stockport manager this morning, he's kind of talking about, yeah, you know, a bit of a sort of outlier how different it is to play than the way yep. they play. So. So you know, we sort of see one passing side quite often try and take on a less passing side, and, and we do, and we're better yeah. against the better sides, Andrew. Yeah. And unquestionably, these lot are a better side. Yeah. So but, you know, how are you? How are you feeling? What give team? Get counter attacking. That's what it is. Yeah, well, very much so. And we, we've got the technicians. This is the thing. Like we can get them on the ball, but it's a question of getting them on the that ball. That was our issue with Rochdale, and I'll tell you that much. How attack? How many attacking players we had on the pitch for that game? That's where the goals start coming through. I'll compare it to the Premier League. Liverpool have always struggled against the worst of teams, but then they'll go and beat the top teams. Yeah. It's because they soak up the pressure and they bounce back and they fly forward. Listen, I'm not sure what the relevance of history is here, but we've got a, you know, the last last home game here was the days of Billy Painter and Charlie, who just made an appearance there, but a slightly, well, far, a much younger yeah. Charlie Austin. Um, and there was a uh, 4-0 thumping at the counter ground, if I recall. If I recall, it was Painter getting a couple. Danny Ward scored and A and other who I can't yeah. remember. I think Stockport were on the sort of terminal decline, weren't they? I think they had Gary Ablett as yep. the manager for a season. He just couldn't. Yeah, the late Gary Ablett. A lovely man who could yeah. buy a win. Right? Yeah, he was in a yeah. he was in a very bad place. But then prior to that, we'll remember I think it was three 0 here at the Cantagram with Matt Hayward scoring a like a twenty five yard chip. Um and I'm sure back then, Andrew, you were probably on Bright. It was Sussex duty, were you not, in, in those eras on the radio for I'm Sussex? I'm sure if I'd seen a Matt Hayward chip in the flash. You'd have remembered it. <laughs> well, I do recall, I was right behind the goal in the town end as Matt Hayward himself chipped the goalkeeper from about 25 yards. It was something to see. Um, so, yeah, it's, let's like say, history, it, it doesn't do them any favours. Their manager is saying that we're a little bit of an outlier. Um, the pitch looks beautiful. We've got a lot of returning heroes. It's all set up for a Swindon three points, Andrew, oh, isn't it? We, we, we come back. We come back home. It, I think it. I think if it, my prediction would probably depend if we if we're confident enough to start Blake Tracy up and see us getting something. If not, then you do just fear for all the good play we have. Stockport are going to find a good corner, good free kick, and make it and make it difficult. So. Right. So there we go. So I have I have slightly sound there. You, you've got splinters in the bum though. I am going to hold you to a scoreline, Andrew. Uh, <laughs> I'm afraid my gut is... Uh, go on, go on let's, let's say we'll scrag a draw out of it. Scrag a draw, says Andrew. Scrag a draw. Andrew, have a great day today. Give um, hero of 89-90 player final unused substitute, Dave Hockaday. Um, but general, all-round good guy in Swindon Town Colours, our very best. Good luck on the mic. Um, we would like to hear... Um, the word peak goose on your commentary at least once. Any other words we would like, Andrew, to try and work into commentary today, gentlemen? Peak yeah. goose, I think, is important. Yeah. Gutter snipe, I think, would be another wow. one that I would like to see. Wow. Yeah. Gut, we'll give him three three words we need today. Peak goose, gutter snipe, and Mr. Hodges will be sitting there just yeah. cursing into his coffee right now. Yeah. Peak, and Edam, there we go. Edam, Pete Goose and Gutter Snipe for you, please, Mr. Uh, Horse. Right. They're, they're in lies your challenge. Actually, I've got a snipe you could use for a good goal. If you Absolutely. And, and I will point out that um, if Andrew does indeed work one of those words into his commentary today, we will be making an undisclosed uh, donation to a charity 
of Andrew's choosing. Not, <laughs> not that we like to add any more pressure to you, no. Andrew, but have a great day, buddy. Thanks for joining us. I'll, I'll try not to have a peak piece of <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm the news, I'm the Beautiful. You, how lovely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how lovely to be able to present Andrew with the 2019-20 <laughs> trophy in yeah. the Arkles. We do get some we do get some, some some blessed opportunities in this ground. In all seriousness, um, I've spoken to Andrew to, to, about Andrew. I've spoken to Andrew about the COVID season before, and likewise, we've spoken to like to Paul Caddis, and mm-hmm. you know we've we've analysed the impact on the career whilst he was a swindler. People like Jonathan Grounds and whatnot. I mean, that season was utterly horrific, and and what soulless. Whilst I think for Andrew there was there were nice benefits in terms of his ability to be able to get out get out of his house, yeah. go to work, travel to some of these places. You imagine the soulless football that that poor guy had to try and commentate over. Yeah, the managerial um, sort of tenure that he had to try and sort of interrogate. Yeah. An interview in Sheridan after those games. I mean, Andrew. By the end of it, I thought Andrew was doing an incredible I would have job. Punched him in his throat. <laughs> <laughs> we're not. We're not after the watershed now, Ellis. But listen, there's a boxer's instinct for you. Um, but yeah, I mean, listen. It, 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 that was a very, very difficult season for him. But but juxtaposed with the champagne football that was played yeah. for well over three quarters of the previous season where Andrew just gave us some absolute commentary gifts. My favourite being up at the up at the Stratton Bank end. Yeah. Owen Doyle scores. Of course, Owen <laughs> Doyle scores. As night follows day, as grass is green. I will never forget those words as yeah. long as I live. And they are right up there and as iconic as the immortal Vic Morgan. And yeah. Charlie Henry, the town substitute, has equalised again in that goal from that position just there, 30 yards straight in the top corner. Changed the trajectory of 80s and 90s yeah. football in Swindon Town in that moment. Jones going in, Austin. Yeah, and Austin going in. Yes, absolutely. Oh. Who's in that goal? Uh, it's incredible. Absolutely well, incredible. In front of the team. Oh, no. Austin going in down there. Yeah, and then obviously, yeah, Charlie on his return here. I mean, Andrew's commentary on that moment was yeah. just, it was the cross go, it was the Jeez, cross, the cross going in and Austin hit it. Yeah, he, he might, he might. He's down there right now, isn't he? Yeah, so there's, there's Charlie entertaining the sponsors. Um, which is always We've nice to see. Trophy, so he's a real winner. And also in the background, you've got um, Town's coaching staff setting up the mm. boys for the drill. They've not noticed they haven't turned on the sprinkler yet. They're waiting for. It's such a beautiful day. I can't get over it. It's unreal, mate. I'm literally roasting. Especially after yesterday's uh, absolute shit show with the weather. Yeah, it's unreal. Storm. Well, I'm not being funny. I left that, left their house this morning. It was blowing a gale in uh, on the London Kent Rain border. Storm yesterday. Hot sun beaming down today. That pitch is getting a treat and a half. You want some breaking news from the Swindon Town advertiser? Swindon Town's four goal hero down here has just been named in the FIFA Player of the Week. Oh. The FIFA 23 Player of the Week. He's been that the team of the week, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, so he's right up there. Everyone loves a bit of EA Sports, don't I, they? I did see him uh, a video of him signing some some Ultimate Team cards, Hannah's. Oh, did you? Yeah. Well. Did you? Well, where's mine? Yeah, the big ones. Where's mine? The big ones. Ask nicely and they should give. Well, who's got those? Yeah. Well, let's ask him. Well, hang on a second. Someone needs to we get need me to one get of Charlie. those. We need to get Charlie up here to get well, one of those. If, why didn't you tell me when we had Kit Man hoops here? I would have got myself some quality schmutter. Oh, you've let me down. So you have. You've you let me down. I don't want to interrupt you on the show. I'm always talking, mate. That's the problem with you. Like, you don't interrupt me enough. <laughs> you don't interrupt me enough. Right. So, um, Anyway, back to business. How about a, a nice little trivia teaser? How about a nice little trivia teaser for yes, the listeners? Please. Yeah, trivia teaser. What's the prize? Um, the prize will be... Let me... Charlie Austin card. Yeah, and, yeah well, <laughs> no, listen, I'm, until, we're, until, we're, I've, until I've got one in my hand... We'll I'm, be keeping that. Until I've, yeah, until I've got one in my hand, no, I'm not, I'm not going to I'm not gonna make any promises on that respect. But, um, no, I'll tell you what we do. We have, we have five... Um, we've got five... Of our new, I'll be wearing one in the ground today. We've got five of our new exquisite waffle. It's beautiful. So, Tom Broadbent Lounge hoodie. Said, Listen, you don't you make that hand signal at me, Adam, because before you know, I might be putting certain parts of my anatomy in your hand. That was positively wow. arousing, that hand, that hand gesture. Whoa, what did you, you're, you're tricking them there. That's, that's not the gesture you, it sounds like. <laughs> so, listen, all, 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 all I will say, all, all I will say is this we have, we have five of our new. Sir Tom Broadbent Lounge hoodies. Uh, they are twenty-five pounds to purchase, but pennies. Twenty-five, no pounds, mate. Come on, listen. <laughs> I'm not rolling in money. Listen, I do fund them personally, right? I, I don't get given these for free, so I do fund them personally. Playing on the smallest violin you've yeah, ever heard. Yeah, yeah. They're twenty-five quid, 
but 10% of the purchase is going to be donated to the Swindon Town Warm Room. The finances are paid from myself directly to Dean McMacken, um, and Dean himself goes out and actually buys food and sundry, food and, and subsistence for the Warm Room. What, um, what, what um, a great man Dean is as well. The, he's a great the, lad. The work that he does. Um, well, Dean's story is magnificent. Yeah. Dean's story is magnificent. And it's all there out in the open, so I'm not betraying any personal confidences. For those of you that don't know Dean's story, just go Google Dean McMacken and read about his story. It's a wonderful article that the advert wrote about him. So Dean was a, a former um, Class A drug addict. Um, that's not as in Class A as in the top class, but that is in he was addicted to Class A drugs, which yeah. anyone will know. <laughs> trying to trying to break yourself out of a Class A drug habit mm. is is probably it's a life or death dis- sort of choice. 100%. There is there is no two ways about it. And and the impact as somebody that used to be a first responder, that is me. I worked with an awful lot of people that were in a similar boat to Dean. And all I will say is. Um, you would often see people just repeat offending over and over and over again. And, and crucially, you, you would often see at close impact the impact that it has on people's families. Yeah. And all of this stuff, again, I'm not betraying any confidences. It's all out there in the public domain. And I know Dean is very open about these stories. So, again, we're not, we're not, you know, we're not dragging people's sort of personal lives out for, for other people to, to muse around. Um, Dean, um, Dean managed to fight off his addiction. Uh, he'll always be a recovering addict, as I'm sure that he will. He'll be the first person to say that he will always be um, in a in a state of recovery. Um, but Dean now runs a very very successful um, travel consultancy. Um, and Ellis, he is one of two sponsors alongside ourselves of you and your boxing career. Indeed. Um, but Dean does a huge, huge amount for charity in and yeah. around the Swindon area, particularly the homeless and particularly people that have experienced similar similar challenges to what Dean's faced. Ma- match days, he's always collecting, I, I believe, his blankets and is it all clothes? Yeah, and um, food. Yeah, always on match days and uh, giving up his time after the game as well to obviously uh, go give it to you know, the, the homeless shelters and, and whatnot. So he, he, to, 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 you know, give up all his time for that, um, not not many people would do. Um, yeah, top bloke. And he's, um, so Dean, um, Dean receives all the finances for all of our hoodie purchases directly from me. Um, and both Dean and Rob Angus have got complete transparency on all the financials around the charitable setups for um, our hoodies and anything Tom Broadbent now does that raises money for um, our homeless community. Right, so here's the challenge then, dear listener. Here is your trivia challenge. If you would like one of five remaining to Tom Broadbent Lounge hoodies, first of all, you've got to ask yourself why you're not buying one of the other four <laughs> at £25, including postage and packing. DM me if you're interested, and we will make sure that we can get you one in size XS through to 5XL. Wow. So fair to say we can, units we, we, can even, we can even get one for the, for the old... Um, the old Carlisle goalkeeper. We get one to fit him. All six foot, oh. bling, six foot ten of him, whatever it is. Oh, ridiculous. We can get you a Fraser Forster sign one if you want. Yeah. We don't mind. But anyway, no size XS to five um, XL. Ten percent of the twenty five pound, including posting and packing, kicks back to the Swindon Town Warm Room. The rest of it is all in production, printing, posting, and packaging. So if you want one. Um, I will ask you to DM us your details. DM at T underscore STBL. Let us know a postal address. Give us your PayPal details. We'll make sure that we get you one of the five remaining hoodies. We're only going to do hoodies in small batches. We like to keep them limited edition. We'll have another design coming out further down the line. But the latest one is exquisite Swindon Town Football Club waffle. Um, big Sir Tom Broadbent Lounge logo on the front, surrounded by the text, and I'll be wearing it out on the pitch today. So um, Elena wants to sing. Well, Elena wants to sing. So we've got Helena Diaz Butcher listening in, and she wants to sing. Well, Lanes, let's, let's see if let's yeah, let's, again, let's see if you yeah, we're gonna we're gonna invite you to speak, Lanes. Let's see if you <laughs> if your bark is as big as your bite. Here we go. Come on, Lanes. Don't hide away. So Helena Diaz Butcher, wing extraordinaire, Ooh. and she's oh. only gone and joined the show. How are we, Lane? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, very good. So you're saying you're gonna sing? I didn't invite them. <laughs> what do you mean, not right now? When? Yeah, when are you going to sing? But another time. I want the well, hoodie. No, no. Listen. So come on, Lanes. You can whilst you're on talk to talk to us about all things Swindon Town Women's Football Club. So proud we are your proud sponsor. One of 
one of um, five of the ladies that we now sponsor, along with Anna Barnes, Mia Mugford, Charlie Rowlands, number nine, Annie Colston, and yourself. We're very, very proud sponsors of you girls and all you're achieving. We've got a big week coming up next week at the County Ground, haven't we? We have. We're all really excited and nervous, but excited. Oh, I don't think you're going to be nervous. Well, look, last time, Lanes, you were here, you absolutely tore it up. 10 nil against them. Um, 10 nil. Well, I say it wasn't last time you were here. It was the time before, wasn't it? Last time you were here was Plymouth. But go back to Poulton. You absolutely ripped them a new one. Plenty of assists. Annie, what did Annie score that day? Was it four lanes? I think you were amongst the assists for all four. Yeah, I think I think that was it. That sounds about right. <laughs> and then, obviously, slightly more tricky against Plymouth, but you just decided to spend most of the game fighting everybody. Yeah. Is that fair? Is that a fair assumption? We don't talk about that anymore. Is this done? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Southampton, fifth in the league lanes. They're, they're pretty much, their record is almost identical to yourself. They've got a lot of similar challenges Swindon Town women have got as well, in that they're being bought under the umbrella of the of the club, per se. Um it's going to be a bit of a humdinger of a clash, this, isn't it? Almost like um, it's got draw written all over it, but in Swin- classic Swindon Town fashion, it's probably going to be some a thrilling 4-3. So um, anything you want to tell us about the game? Anything that we should know? Um, I mean, we've played them um, twice already. We lost both times. Uh, they were hard games, to be fair. Um, you know, but since then, we have kind of like got more people on board the squad and stuff. Uh, so we're hoping. We've been doing a lot of stuff and analysis a lot of stuff and training about it. So we're hoping to get a result. I mean, I'd take a draw at this point, but a win would be really good. A win would be really good. It's, um, I mean, obviously, the top of the table, they've all pretty much run away with it, Lanes, haven't they? What, what is the, what's the objective, do you feel? What's, what's the big objectives that the club are, uh, or, or that rather that the team are setting themselves between now and the end of the season? So we were going for top four, but recently, you know, we haven't been playing our best. Um, we're obviously still going for that. Uh, it's kind of just doing well, you know, building the squad, starting to work better, play together for next season, I think. You know, people see us doing well, then they might want to come join us lot playing better together. Kind of just doing the best we can, I think, and trying to get top four, uh, how hard it is. Yeah, hard. well, yeah. But, I mean, listen, you, we, I mean, against Poulton, we had a crowd of about 750. I think it's Plymouth. The crowd was around the sort of five, 600 mark. We'd be hoping the weather's like it is today it's absolutely glorious lanes here at the county ground we'd be open for a, a crowd pushing a thousand that'd be lovely wouldn't it to break break another record because as i as i delighted in telling the um uh telling the uh the management of swindon town football club per se messrs morfuni angus uh, norman et al um every single show that we've done with swindon town women um we've broken the previous show's record and the latest show, we're getting on for nearly 2,000 people tuned in on Wednesday to listen to you guys ambush the team management. So, um, again, it's that continual upward curve for you guys, isn't it? What's it like being part of it, Lanes, as, as that journey continues and people are continuing to sort of open their eyes to women's football in Swindon? What's it like being inside that journey? It's good. It's so nice. Like, I know 700 people doesn't sound a lot in the category ground, but it is like genuinely you can hear it and it feels you feel the pressure like it is a lot so i don't know how people play in front of ten thousand because 700 was enough um hey it's yeah. bad listen ladies i don't want to tell you it's bad enough walking out of a bloody microphone in front of ten thousand no, people let alone this. playing in front of it you've got this <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's scary but it's nice like it's nice to have people like you know message you after like you know my daughter love watching you it is so nice and it's kind of like it kind of makes it worth playing, you know, it's good. And I hope we get more people, I sort of, it's scary. But I do hope more people come next Sunday. I'm sure I'm sure they will. Um, but, I mean, listen, Lanes, in closing, you, you did sort of come onto the show today sort of promising us a little sing-song. Yeah, you got to sing. Uh, uh, Ellis, what, what should we ask her to sing? Well, is there uh, any particular song that we think we should get Lanes to sing today before we allow her to disappear off into the... It's not <laughs> happening. I, I only came to listen and to say good luck and have a nice day. <laughs> so... No, 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 no. I'm, no, no. I'm literally about to pop out. I was just saying good luck. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everyone's got that excuse, haven't well, they? do it quick before you pop out. More yeah, than well, enough time. If more, you're still talking. The crowds are building up, Lanes. People need to hear your dulcet tones. And if you, all that's going to happen is, I'll put it this way, if you don't do it now, I'm going to have you out on the pitch um, before the end of the season singing to 10,000 people. So the choice is yours. I know you would, but no, I'm going <laughs> to say good luck today. Hope it goes well for you. And have a nice day. Nice to see you. All right, ladies. Enjoy your Saturday. And Take you care. Know, we bye look bye forward bye. to seeing you next week. And bye you, now. Bye. What, what a journey they're on. So, yeah, I mean, I, I literally, as I was saying, the um, incredible thing about the Women's Football Club is 
the very first show that we did, I've, I've made it very, very, I've been very open about the fact I've been on a, a personal journey in terms of my appreciation of women's football and, and women's football in Swindon per se. And, and that is a very, very steep learning curve for me. And I am enjoying every single second of it. I love the fact now that I've got football on a Saturday and now football on a Sunday. And they're, and they're all wearing our badge, right? Yeah. I, I love it. I yeah, absolutely yeah. love it. The, the, thing, the thing that I've loved is getting to know the personalities and the character. And the lovely thing about our show and the, what it is we try and do, how we try and get people under the hood of the personalities, is there a brilliant bunch of characters, the women's team. I mean, Ellis, they were fan, on fantastic form on Wednesday night. I know, yeah. you, I know that you were listening in the, yeah, to the yeah, recorded yeah. version. We had, you had to miss the presenting uh, duties. But the thing that really excites me about them is they're all just such brilliant banter. Yeah. Like, they're great fun. They're, good, they're fun. Well. They're game for a laugh. But they're actually doing... The, 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 the girls are doing great in the league. They've got talent throughout their side. And as Lanes was just saying... They're increasing their investment in the squad. Charlie Rowlands is a free scoring number nine from Forest Green, mm. right? Charlie Rowlands loves to score goals. Emerson Evans has come up from the development team. She scored three. She's got three senior goals under her belt already. She's only just turned 16. She was another one. She was an absolute goal machine. I think it was Melksham she was at yeah. um, prior to coming to, to Swindon Town. They've got a cracking goalkeeper in Emily McGrogan. Annie, Annie Colston was playing at the top level of women's football had a child, it's taken a couple of years to come back from that, regain fitness. Annie Colston can't stop scoring. Lanes, who we've just been spoken to, out on the flank. Lanes is just, she's assists on sticks. Like, it's absolutely crazy as we give Romeo Hutton a nice wave as he goes by. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a lovely, so anyway, look, Sunday, lovely opportunity. I'm doing a sales job on you. Get, get, get your asses if you're listening in, get, get your asses into gear. Um, if you can, you know, invest in your season ticket for next season. 40 quid for a season ticket next season. And a minimum five games at the county ground. And that doesn't include games at Foundation Park as well. There you go. So they're going to be on the estate, right? The girls are going to be on the estate. You've not got to drag yourself to Oxford, you know, to Oxfordshire. Dirty. God, I've noticed you pinch your nose, Adam, as I say those words. You pinch your nose. That's right, you should. I thumb my tooth at you, sir. So Oxford. Um, we don't want to be playing football in Oxfordshire, do we? We'll be anywhere near that. With all due respect to Fairford, it's, it's great that the club have been supported and they've had the use of Fairford Town. This is as close as I, I would like to be yeah. to Oxford. We, it's, yeah. it's, for what they've done for the women's team, yeah, fair play, but I still can't help but think if we flatten the place and turn it into a car park, no one would miss it. So. Swindon, Swindon, Swindon women need to be playing in our community. Swindon Town is a, a community club. We need to be playing football in our we community. Like more seats at Foundation Park. That'll do the job. Well, we could do that. Adam. We could do that. Do you want? Do you want to invest in that yourself? Do you want to? Do you <laughs> well, want to when we were talking about the lottery. Ah, there. well, yeah. Well, there you are. Well, but I'll just remember to buy a ticket this week. That might help. Right. So, what else we have got going on? Uh, we've had a, we've 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 given Charlie a wave. We've given Romeo Hutton away. So we know they're in the school. They're in the, they're in the familiar yeah. attire that tells you they're going to be playing today. No surprises there. I've seen. We've met Jody in the car park, haven't yeah. we? Today we've had a chat with Jody. That was always that was nice. Um, met Mingoat. I can tell you for a fact, um, uh, Mingoat is not in the squad today. Ooh. Mingoat is not in the squad today. I believe he may have a knock. But Mingo is not in the squad. I've seen Mr. Joe Thomason walking about. You've seen JC yeah. bowling about in club tracksuit? Indeed. He's in the squad, I'm telling you. He's in the squad. That's good news. Um, so, listen, I mean, all that remains, all that remains is uh, while we give the listeners half an hour or so, last 10 minutes of our show. Um, first of all, we need to find out. We've got to, we got to do this uh, trivia teaser that I've promised you. Oh, yeah. so we got oh, yeah, distracted. We got <laughs> <laughs> totally distracted. Right. Trivia Come teaser. On. Sorry. Sorry. Like, so, so, dear listener, trivia teaser is this. There were three, three, for your chance to win, one of a limited edition hoodie, there were three royal honours past the former Swindon Town players in the last fortnight. Ooh. Name all three of the former Swindon Town players that picked up royal honours in the, in, the, in the latest honours list. I can name you two. No, but I don't want you to name. You're not getting a hoodie. You're already <laughs> I'll, sat I'll, in a hoodie. How many hoodies you, do you I'll want? I'll give you two. Well, I'm sure you can as well. But really, you should be in a position where you can give me all three. Because I know all three. So tweet. If you know the answer, dear listener, who named the three former Swindon Town players? Oh, I'm glad you can. Now we're there. <laughs> yeah, right. Name the, <laughs> name the three former Swindon Town legends that have received honours in the last two weeks in the Royal Honours list. Tweet your um, tweet your selection, your three players. Tweet your entries to uh, t, uh, at T underscore S T B L. That's T underscore S T B L at the Sir Tom Broadbent Lounge, or add it to the thread. And if you don't, then I will. Yeah, add it to the thread. Um, <laughs> I, I'm loving the fact that Adam is totally stumped. 
Unashamedly he's, so. He's Googling. He's, he's Googling. That's cheating. Googling. I'm not Googling. You're not allowed I'm to do that. You're not allowed to do that. All right. So, seeing as you're all being a bit rubbish and, and we haven't had a single entry yet, I will give you... Josie only tweeted uh, today. <laughs> I, will g- <laughs> I will give you another opportunity. So, I'll give you a couple of cryptic clues. One of the winners was on the cast list of Escape to Victory, alongside Pele, Bobby Moore, Sylvester Stallone and Michael Caine. And of course, Swindon's own Osvaldo Ardiles. There were two players, two Swindon legends in that side. Ozzy was one of them, who was the other player. But name me the other two. I'll give you another trivia tip. One of them was a lone legend who was signed by Andy King. And after six odd appearances, left. he was so good, he left the ground to a standing ovation alongside a certain Jarrell Eiffel. So it wasn't Jarrell himself, but it was a player that literally did a lap of honour and got a stand innovation. He was that good. So one of them was in Escape to Victory. One of them was signed by Andy King on loan and left the ground his last game to a standing ovation. And the third player um, is a regular face on a TV channel that has just binned off Soccer AM after 30 years. Wow. So there are... Th- Yes, and he's also been on The Masked Singer, as Adam is saying. Oh, so, come on. Ninja Warrior. And Ninja Warrior. Thank <laughs> you very much. Obvious, and, and a good friend of Ben Shepherd. <laughs> a good friend of Ben Shepherd. So, three former Swindon Town legends. Oh, only just clocked it, look. <laughs> if you would like your chance to win one of five remaining Sir Tom Broadbent Lowe's limited edition hoodies, tweet us your guesses. I need all three players that have received royal honours in the last couple of weeks. I want all three names from you. Let's see if we've got any more guests. Have we got any more? Someone keep, keep an eye on the thread, one of you two, because I'm going to only end up like closing the show if I don't. So there's, there's your guess. Uh, sorry, there's your tips. I'm going to give you some more. What, what more tips can I give you without giving it away? Okay. Amongst one of the players, former clubs, is Aston Villa and Newcastle United. One of the... Pl- oh, and Gavin Chappell. He's straight in there. Well done, Gavin Chappell. So, Gavin Chappell has got the correct answer. Gavin Chappell answers, Hannah's, it's Chris Kamara, James Milner and Mike Summerby. It was, of course. It was all three of them. I mean, how amazing is that? In the last two weeks, three, four... You talk about, but we lampoon our club. We like to have a, we like to have a little bit of a kind of gallows humour, given some of our recent trials and tribulations. But if ever there was a doubt that we are a massive football club, guys, three of our former players, three of them have received royal honours. In the last three weeks, all three of them MBEs. It's incredible. There you go. Mike Summerby, Chris Kamara, Swindon's very first black player. Mike Summerby, what a career he had for Swindon before he then went on and became a legend at Manchester City and, and got England recognition. So big that he ended up saying, saying that an, a, a, a team of English PO, of, of uh, allied POWs could escape the Nazis by breaking through a, a team bath and into the Paris underground. That's what a legend he was. And then James Milner. I remember the day I was sat up there, top corner of the um, what is now the Don Rogers stand, as James Milner left. I think it was I think it was Watford or Sheffield United. I think was his final game on on loan. And I've never seen it before in my life. A loan player receive a stand innovation. Both him and Jarrell were on loan at the time, and they both ran around the pitch and got a stand innovation from all four stands. Absolutely incredible. But don't ever lose sight of the fact that we're a huge bloody football club. Bloody huge. Right. There we are. What else have we got to say today? Is that it? Are we there? Have we have we have we have we bought this show to a, oh, yeah. to a logical ending? We, we need a score prediction. All right, predictions. Let's have your predictions then, Adam. What are you feeling today? Given everything that we've observed. In fact, before we do that, just just before, dear listener, before you disappear, just a little reminder of what's going on in the ground today. Um, courtesy of the Sir Tom Broadbent Lounge, Swindon Town Football Club, um, Trust STFC, and the Official Supporters Club, all working hand in hand as as well it should be. I'm going to be out on the pitch from 2.30 today and we've got a whole host of surprises out on the pitch for you. A week ago, we celebrated the anniversary of the 1969 League Cup final and today I am over the moon to be able to confirm that I'll be conducting an on-pitch Q&A with John Trollope, MBE and Don Rogers about their recollections from 1969. I'm unbelievably um, proud and privileged to be asked to do that. I'm so stoked. Um, so um, they're going to be on the pitch. Get, get to your seats at 2.30. They're going to be on the pitch between 2.30 and 2.40. Um, and then at about quarter two or 10 to, 
We're going to be inviting the one, the only Michael Doughty, returning for his fourth spell at the club, but this time without his boots. He's going to be returning in his new role as head, head of sustainability at Swindon Town Football Club. But what Michael doesn't know and what we know, what is perched here between my legs right now, gentlemen, he says, is an absolute cannon, let me tell you. And that cannon is, of course, the silverware from 2019-2020. Uh, we got the trophy. Michael doesn't know. We're going to be presenting this trophy that Adam's going to be hiding from him. And Michael's going to get the opportunity. Oh, pres- well, you're a big boy, but you're a big boy, Adam. You've got plenty of plenty of bulk. You'll do that. So Michael's going to be doing a lap of honour, presenting the trophy to the fans. He's got that opportunity. He'll be given the opportunity that he never got to do when we won it. And then just prior to kickoff, we're going to bring the house down because we're going to be introducing the Nigel Eady trustees, led by John Carter, who's going to be collecting a Swindon Town Trust Hero Award from Trust STFC Chairman Steve Myton and Swindon Town Chief Executive Rob Angus. I cannot think of a better lineup on a day like today. So we've got the legends of 69, two goal hero Don Rogers, John Trollop MBE, still the holder of the most amount of appearances for an outfield player in the Football League. Absolutely incredible. Then we've got Swindon Town legend, the Wiltshire Perlow, never had the opportunity to raise the silverware, returning to the club for a fourth spell, Launched the, the the owner and um and and, and founder of Hilo Athletic is going to be parading the 2019-20 trophy to Swindon Town supporters. And just before kickoff, we've got the ED trustees and John Carter receiving their recognition from the supporters. On the, the two what the day after they signed off a check of two point three million pounds that secured this ground that we're sat amongst now. Uh, it's what a, what a day! I'm privileged. I cannot believe it. Cannot believe it. So, predictions then. Let's wrap up with predictions. Last five minutes of the show, guys. What you got for me, Adam? With our, with our habit of conceding two quick goals in a game, I'd like to say we've got enough up front to do it. I, I'm going to have to say a 3-2 if we're going to win. 3-2. A 3-2. So, high scoring. Is it going to be ebb and flow or are we going to like race into a 3-0 lead? Scrappy. or? Scrappy. It'll be 1-0. We'll go 2-1 down. Oh. Then we'll call it back. I've only just got our over me indigestion from last weekend. I don't really need that again. Well, Although with the, with the injuries um, subsidising and um, what Blake Tracy's back in, Tomlinson's back in, it could, it could all be different. You know, it could be, I could be proved wrong, but I think, yeah, it's going to be a scrappy game and there's going to be some goals. All right. Ellis, what are you thinking? Because I've got some thoughts on there, Adam. I think you, you, you may be a little closer to where my instincts are than I'm, than, I'm, than I'm comfortable with, to be honest. But I'll give you my rationale shortly. Ellis, what about you, mate? I think we're in for an emotional roller coaster here. Oh, jeez, it's not another um, one. We're going to go 2-0 down, and then we're going to bring it back to 5-2. Um, we're going to see a hat-trick from Mr. Austin again, yeah. and two goals from Rashawn Hepburn Murphy. Um I like that, though, because the last time you predicted a Hepburn hat-trick, we had a... Well, he had two, had two. and almost had a, had, a, had a third, but... Hang on a minute. Just just while the Stockport players are looking up at me, let me just perch this League 2 trophy on my knee right now, <laughs> because there's particularly that shit house. Paddy Madden's having a good yeah. look, right? And I'm going to just say this, hopefully with an earshot. You'll never sing that. You'll never sing that. League 2 champions, you'll never sing that. You'll never sing that. You'll never sing that. League two champions. You'll never sing that. No, they're not going to win it. I'm absolutely (laughs) certain. But have a good look, boys. Look, they're looking up, aren't they? They love it. They're looking up. They They don't. They don't quite know what's going on, but they know something's going on. They love it. All I know is that they play in blue and white, and there's red and white ribbons on this beauty, perched on my knee. Can someone please get a photo of this moment? Feel like we need to capture this and get it on Twitter. So, um, yeah. Let's. Oh, hang on. Let's make sure we get. Make sure we get some of their guys in the background. That'd be beautiful. So, Ellis, and while we do that, let's have your prediction. Then you said emotional roller coaster. Five two. We're gonna, yeah, we're gonna go two 0 down, um, and then we're gonna score immediately from kickoff after the second goal. And we're gonna, we're gonna just gonna go, go on a blitz. On Five two. Five two. Five two. Wow. Austin Hattrick, Hatton Murphy two. All right. Well, I'll tell you what's gonna happen today. I think um, I'm much more akin to Adam's scoreline. I think we're going to race into a, a healthy 3-0 lead and it's going to be a little bit like England-Italy. I think what you're going to see is a very a very nervy last 20 when at 3-0 we're going to concede at about 60 minutes for 3-1. Then they're going to nick another one at about 78, 79 minutes and the last 10 minutes is going to be agony as they pile forward. But I think it's going to be 3-2. I think it's going to be a very, very, very exciting 
game at the county ground. But anyway, listen, what a treat it's been as we approach half past one. Um, I love the fact that we're sitting here shit house in Stockport County right now with this trophy. I love the fact that they're all having a look, yeah. and uh, they're, they're clearly a little bemused. But I, I can't, I can't help but think we're getting into the Reds, boys. This is good, and I know they can hear because they're all giggling. So I know they can hear. Maybe we need to go down to the uh, to the tunnel, which will be our perch yeah. ever so soon, and uh, maybe we should all stand here collectively oh, kissing it. In fact, let me pass that to you, Adam, because no one's going to thump you the size of you, you brute. <laughs> anyway. Ellis, it's been a treat. What a lovely show it's been. Yeah, thanks nice. for t- yeah. taking the time uh, on this Saturday. Um, Adam, thanks for taking yes. the time. Thanks it's been, it's been lovely, isn't it? We've had uh, Helena Diaz-Butcher from Swindon Town Women uh, join sing. us. Who didn't sing, the coward. We've had Andrew Halls, BBC Radio Wiltshire, uh, join us with his thoughts um, on not only this week, but also last week's eight-goal debacle in Greater Manchester. Um, we've had Michael Doughty join us outside the club shop. That's been an absolute treat today. Um We've had, who else? We've had Kitman Hoops, of course. Yeah. Kitman Hoops came up and joined Andrew us. Andrew Hawes. Um, t- yeah, and Hawes. And, and Hoops gave us the vibe for what's going on inside the uh, inside the dressing room. And we can confirm it's all buoyant. Listen, just as we're bringing the show, just as we're bringing the show to an end, the sun comes out. It's bloody glorious. Listen, if you're umming and ahhing about getting down and getting behind the boys, if you're one of the 79% that of, the, of the 500 odd people that voted on the Sir Tom Broadbent Lounge poll earlier this week, and said the season is over. That is not the vibe we're getting in the ground today. The pitch looks great. The players are all smiling. Everyone's vibing. Get off your ass. Get down the county ground. Like I said, I'm going to be interviewing Don Rogers and John Trollop. Half past two. Between half two and 22. I've got Michael Doughty being surprised on the pitch with the 2019-20 trophy. And then we've got the ED trustees coming out to receive your acclaim. If you care about a football club and you want to say thank you to the individuals that have made the purchase of this wonderful ground we're sat in possible, get off your asses. Get yourself down at the ticket office. If you've got your season ticket and you're refusing to use it, dig it out. Get your ass on your seat. Come and enjoy a lovely day in the Wiltshire sun. I'm Hannahs. This is Ellis. This is Adam. That's AB's STFC Clips. Cheerio. Come on, you Reds. <laughs>